any devil will do, any shaitan, you can take help from. Is it permissible for Muslims to accept the help of non-Muslims? And the veritable Dajjal, the Antichrist, with a cross on his forehead, and he gives you his hand. I want to know whether you will take it or not. What does Sheikh Didat meant when he said this? This is the book, a natural book. It's true to nature. Allah Bari Ta'ala is telling us, La yattakhizil mu'minun al-kafirina awliya'a min dunil mu'mineen. Let not the believers, Muslims, take for friends and helpers, unbelievers, rather than believers. Let not the Muslims take the unbelievers as friends and helpers, rather than believers. And this is quoted to me. When I'm telling, I said, look, if you are in difficulty and there's nobody to help you, any devil will do. Any shaitan you can take help from. So no, no, Allah says, and the guy quotes, La yattakhizil mu'minun al-kafirina awliya min dun al It's Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 28. I said, now you're reading and you're saying, rather than. I said, what does rather than mean? He's better educated than I. I don't want to give you my educational qualifications. You will laugh. You don't have to do that. I said, now, you people in Britain, I think you understand English better than the guys in India or Pakistan or Bangladesh. You ought to. What does rather than, in preference to, what does it mean? Tell me. What I understand, if I'm wrong, at question time, you have the opportunity to correct me. Says, uncle, you don't know English. I said, now, my son, teach me. My daughter, teach me. Rather than, in preference to, Meaning if there is an occasion now that you have a Muslim who's prepared to help you and there is a Christian or an atheist or an agnostic he's prepared to help you between the two who would you go to? To the Muslim. Rather than the Muslims don't go to the unbeliever. But if there is no believer or all the believers put together they can't save you. What do you do? This is the question now. If you haven't got it then what do you do? We have the examples. But before I go to the examples, I want to read to you a commentary by this writer of ours, Abdullah Yusuf Ali. This translation was done in 1935. I purchased my first volume of the Quran, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, in 1935. I paid for it two pound ten shillings. That was half my month's salary, half. I was earning five pounds a month, half my salary, half month's salary I paid for the Quran. No regrets. Wallah, it was the best investment I ever made in my life was to buy that Quran in 1935, about 55 years ago. I purchased this book. And now, I said, let us have a look at this verse I just quoted to you. Let's see what this man understands. In 1935, I'm reading to you his commentary. Let not the believers take for friends or helpers, unbelievers rather than believers. His commentary. If faith is a fundamental matter in our lives, our associations and friendships will naturally be with those who share our faith, Muslim to Muslim. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You join bad company, it's going to make you evil. And evil company may corrupt faith. In our ordinary everyday affairs of business, we are asked to seek the help of believers rather than believers, which we are not doing. Nobody goes to the Quran. In our ordinary affairs, business, buying, selling, you prefer Muslims to non-Muslims, which nobody reads, nobody has been reading. For the first time now we're seeing, what does this mean? Say, in everyday affair, at all times, we must be conscious of this fact that my believing brother, there's a supermarket here and a supermarket there. He says, where do I go? This belongs to the Jew. This belongs to an atheist or a communist or whoever. There's my Muslim brother here. Where do I go between the two? Allah gives you advice, go to the believer. That's business. We are asked to seek the help of believers rather than unbelievers. Only in this way can our community be strong in organization and unity. But where there is no question of preference or where in self-defense we have to take the assistance of those not belonging to our faith, means the unbeliever, that is permissible. This man wrote this in 1935.
If this was a translation done by Ahmad Didat today, and I wrote that commentary, everybody will say, yeah, you know why he says that, because the Saudis paid him. I want to know, in 1935, I tell you, I show you that the Saudis were beggars. The Saudis were depending on our charity. My people were going and taking the zakat and the lillah, said, go for hajj and give to the poor Arab there. And there's more sawab in that. We were subsidizing the Arabs. But 1935, this is what the man wrote, that it is permissible. According to his understanding of the Quran, his translation, he says it is permissible to seek the help of unbeliever if there is nobody else to help you. What about the examples in the life of the Prophet Let's see. After the demise of Ummul Mumini, mother of the faithful, Khadija, she died. And around that time, Abu Talib, his uncle, also died. And the persecution grew in Makkah. So he thought, he said, look, let me go to Taif. And perhaps the people of Taif might give me a hearing. So our Nabi Karim, وسلم, he goes to Taif to preach to the people of Taif. And there he was beaten up, stoned. They chased dogs after him and foot sore and weary, bleeding. He sought refuge. And somebody gave him refuge. I want to know who gave him refuge. So I'm told that this was a Christian. A Christian gave him refuge. I'm asking, right or wrong? There were no Muslims there to help him out. There were only mushriks and an occasional Christian among the Arabs. And a Christian gave him refuge. Right or wrong? You tell me. Then when he returns to Makkah, he needed a patron. Somebody to say, I will be his guardian. Abu Talib is gone. He was his guardian and protector. He was not a Muslim. His own uncle was not a Muslim. Up to his dying day, he never accepted Islam. Abu Talib. Now when he returns to Makkah, he needs somebody to say, okay, under my patronage, under my protection, under my shelter, Muhammad can come into Makkah. This was the custom of the time. Somebody must give you patronship, guardianship. So the man who gave him that patronship was a mushrik. Mushrik, the Quraysh are asking him, have you now started also following his religion? He says, no, I follow the religion of my forefathers, but I give Muhammad protection. Right or wrong? We must answer now, was it right or wrong for him to accept the protection of a mushrik? Then persecution in Makkah grows. And the Sahabas, the companions of the Prophet, had to make a hijrah to Abyssinia, to a Christian country across the Red Sea. Right or wrong? And again, a second hijra to Abyssinia, to a Christian nation. Right or wrong? Answer the question. Was it right or wrong for him to send Sahabas to Abyssinia to the Christians for shelter and protection? Right or wrong? When he had to make the hijra, the person who guided him to Medina was a mushrik. A mushrik is guiding the Prophet to safe destiny in Medina. Right or wrong? Answer the question. If you can't take any help from the non-Muslim, I said, look, again and again and again, a mushrik is guiding him to Medina. Battle of Uhad. Our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he makes a compact with the Jews. He said, you keep out of this battle, this war between us and the Quraysh. But if you keep out, you just protect your flank. Where you are in a majority, you're living there, you protect your side of Medina. And in return for your neutrality, I will give you half the date crops of Medina. And one Sahaba, he cried. He said, we wouldn't give a date to a Jew. And my Rasul, my guide, my leader, he is prepared to give half the date crops of Medina to the Jews. Right or wrong? We have to answer the question. We have to be realist. Not what I feel like and what I wish and what should have happened. I said, now be a realist. If you are in a situation like that, what do you do? Your wife, your mother, your sister, or let's say you yourself, you are drowning. You are a good swimmer, but how long will you last in the deep sea? How long? 24 hours? After that, you must go down and you are sinking. And the veritable Dajjal, the Antichrist, with a cross on his forehead, he is passing on a raft and he gives you his hand. I want to know whether you will take it or not. Your wife, your mother, your sister is drowning and you, you can't help her, you can't swim. And there is this rapist, murderer, known, well known. He's passing in a boat and he wants to give a helping hand to your wife, your mother, your sister, or your daughter. What will you say? You shout and say, no, 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 don't take his hand. Sister, mother, he's a rapist. Is that what you say? Is that what you do? I said, you see now, we must be realist. I'm not trying to justify this guy or that guy or that guy. But I said, I'm telling you, I'm putting the case before you. 
how do we see right or wrong for a person to seek assistance even from shaitan buzurg the great satan america right or wrong if you enjoy this video please like and subscribe to islamica to support our efforts thank you